So in this video, guys, we're going to break down exactly how you can start a brand new software company. Now, I'm going to make this incredibly easy for you because this is the exact strategy that I used to build my first software company. So we're going to break down the three steps that you need to take to start building your first software company. I'm assuming, just like I was when I got started, you guys have got no experience, you've never built an app before, you've never written a single line of code, and you've got no money to invest. So the first thing that you guys are going to need to decide is what is the application that you are building. And this is probably the most crucial and important step that many people skip. The reason it's one of the most important steps is you don't want to spend months building out a software only to launch it for nobody to use it and not make any money from it. Now at this point I don't care if you've got an idea or not. These are the three things that you need to do. The first one is what I call the personal experience method and this is how I came up with the idea for Chat IQ, my software. You need to look at things you do in your day-to-day -day life, whether it's running a business, whether it's at work, or whether it's something that your friends are struggling with. If there's a problem that they have that you can solve with software, this could be your product idea. Now it's very important at this point to realize that we're not trying to come up with an entire software idea. We are literally coming up with a single feature. This is a feature that's going to solve one overarching main problem. So to give you guys an example, in my case with ChatIQ, it's an automated support solution for businesses. When I started out, I only built one feature because I had the idea that live chatbots and customer support was very inaccessible for small businesses. So I basically took the live chatbots, I removed the human from it and replaced them with AI. Therefore, making customer support quicker, making it cheaper and more scalable for small to medium businesses. The second thing that you guys can do is check in Reddit threads. This is exactly exactly what I did as well when I started building Chai. I had the idea, but I wanted to validate it and see if people would actually pay for it. So how do you do that? Well, you go into the communities where your customers hang out. So for example, I would go into communities where there's people who run e-commerce brands, and I would basically just look through and see if they are facing this problem. The third way is using a website called g2.com. Basically, all we need to do is take the URL of one of our competitors for our idea, paste it into G2. For my case, this would be something like Intercom. When we paste this URL into G2, we're going to see a list of reviews. This is the really crucial part because it's going to tell you exactly what people like about their product, but more importantly, exactly what people dislike about their product. All you need to do here is see if the dislikes outweigh the likes. You need to solve those dislikes in your software and then you can steal their customers. But more importantly, you're looking for trends. If a lot of people are saying there are consistent dislikes with the software, this is the one thing that you need to fix. If it's all very sporadic and most people really like the software, it may not be the product for you. Okay, so now we've got the idea. The next thing that we need to do is build it. And this is usually where a lot of people slip up. In my case, I build web applications. I think web applications are significantly easier for beginners. It's much easier to get started and learn. It's much easier to make money from it. And there's a lot less competition. So I wouldn't recommend anybody who's watching this video get started with an iOS application. The reason being, it's very difficult to monetize. Because when somebody goes onto the App Store, if they search for your app, they are seeing it directly in comparison with somebody else's app and the chances are one of your competitors is giving the app away for free whereas with a web application it is a website when a business signs up to the application it's much easier for them to want to pay for it because it is a separate website it's a separate entity you are not in direct competition with your competitors so to build the web application the tool that I recommend you guys use is called bubble it's basically a no code drag and drop builder full stack application designer for web applications so you want an input you drag it onto the page you want text you drag it onto the page Page. If you want a button, you drag that onto the page. Then the entire workflows and the brain of how the app works is also a no-code editor. So for example, if I want to sign somebody up, I click on the button and I select sign up for the action. It could not be simpler. Now, at this point, I usually get questions from people saying, how long will it take me to learn? It really depends on how much time you can commit per day. For me, I built my first MVP in two weeks and I started making money within the first two weeks. For you, it could take longer. When it comes down to cost, it's actually completely free to get started. So you can actually start learning how to use Bubble without actually having to pay Bubble a penny. The only thing I will say here is, if you want to publish that application and get users for it, you will have a cost. And this is really where you need to be thinking, am I building a business or am I creating a hobby or am I just learning a skill? Because if I'm gonna publish that app, it's only gonna cost me $30 per month, but I need to make sure that I'm getting users for it, okay? And that comes down to lesson three, and that is marketing. How do we get users for our software once we've launched it? So Bubble is the no-code builder that we will be using, but how do we actually learn to use it? Now, this is the best advice that I can give you in this entire video. The only way that you can learn to code or use no code or build applications is by 
doing, which means you need to come up with a very simple project. And when I say simple, I mean incredibly simple. Something like a basic chatbot or a task manager. This is exactly how I learned. So if you want to learn how to use Bubble, here are the resources that you need to check out. One, you can have a look through YouTube. There's not a great deal out there to help you. The second thing, you can actually ask me for help. I am doing weekly free classes to help you guys learn how to build a software business using Bubble. It goes on for about an hour and a half every single week. So if you want to get access to that, it's completely free. The link is in the description. Go ahead onto my website and register for that. But you've got to decide at this point, why am I building on Bubble? Am I trying to build a business or am I trying to learn a skill? I would say most people here are trying to build a business from Bubble, which means they probably want to get users. So this leads us to the third lesson, and that is how do we actually get customers for our product? And it's actually a lot more easy than most people think. So step one, you need to make sure that you get traffic to your website. Traffic and visitors leads to buyers. It's that simple. Traffic leads to users and users leads to buyers. So the only thing that we need to solve right now is how to get that traffic. And there are two ways that you can get traffic. Only one of them is available to you right now. The first one is paid ads. The second thing that we can do is organic marketing. That is creating content on social media. The algorithm will boost our content if we get good and we will be rewarded with traffic. There is no other way of marketing your product. I don't care what anybody else tells you. You can try cold DMs. Unless you have sales experience, it's not going to work for you. It is easier and quicker and more valuable for you to get good at content. So here's what you need to do. When you have your idea for your product, the second that you open your Bubble app, when you have a blank page, you need to create content for TikTok. And it does not need to be high quality content. It does not need to be planned. It does not need to show your face. The reason we do it at this point here is one, I assume that you have zero experience with content creation. And two, we want to start to get ahead before we have to launch our product which means the first video that you post on TikTok will be shit. The first 50 videos will also be shit. You will probably only get 200 to 500 views on the videos that you post. However, that then means by the time that your software has been built two weeks later or four weeks later, you've now posted 50 videos or 100 videos. You now know what works and what doesn't work. You've now got more comfortable either talking in front of the camera, filming your screen, or just doing the audio, which means when you launch your product, you are now able to create videos which get a few thousand views and drive traffic to your website. Now here's a story just to show you guys that this is possible. So when I first started marketing Chat IQ, this is how I created the videos. You guys can follow exactly the same thing. First of all, highlight the pain point. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? You should know this because in step one, we came up with an idea and validated it by looking at people's problems. So we're going to start the video by saying, do you have this problem? If so, I am building a solution. This is what my solution looks like. If you want to get access to it, I have a waitlist. Join the waitlist in my bio or comment any ideas for what you want to see me add to this product. The benefit of that video is two things. One, you build a community of people, okay, who are now going to come back and watch your videos because they want to see the progress of you building that software. Two, you have people join your waitlist, which means when you launch, you have a few hundred people or a few thousand people in that waitlist that you can send an email to saying the product is live. But this is how you guys can get started building your first software. So hopefully that has answered some of your questions. Firstly, you need to come up with an idea. Secondly, you need to learn how to actually build using Bubble. And don't forget, I do free weekly live classes to teach you guys how to build with Bubble and create your own businesses. Thirdly, you guys need to learn how to market that. You need to start getting users for that. You need to start creating content. Always post the content on TikTok and on Instagram. It does not matter how good the content is. I really do not want to hear any excuses from anyone saying, I can't create content. I do not give a fuck. You have to create that content. That is the only way to do it. Just film your screen and film the product. It's not difficult. It's generally not difficult. Like there are eight year olds who create content on TikTok and Instagram. If an eight year old can do it, you can do it. So the other thing I will say to you guys, if you're watching right now and you are inspired by building your first software, you want to build your first software, you want to learn how to build using Bubble and you want a little bit more information from me on how I built my first software and how I marketed it. If you click the link in the description. Not only on that free class, I'm gonna show you how to build your first app using Bubble, but I'm also gonna give you a full case study on how I built ChatIQ from zero to $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue in under 60 days without writing a single line of code, without any experience, and just by posting content on TikTok. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one.